Let's look at an example of inference on the slope. If you recall this example that we've looked at previously, we have 16 females receiving a score on the empathic concern scale and having pain-related brain activity measured by an MRI while their partner had a painful stimulus applied. And we have our score on the empathic concern scale as our X variable and our activation level in the pain centers of the brain as our Y variable. And we're trying to see if there is a relationship there. And so what we're going to do is put a line through those points. The relationship looks rather linear and we want to fit a line through there so we use the method of least squares and we put it into a computer and we get something that looks like this so for this first little bit over here we have our estimates of our slope and our intercept and those are put into our least squares regression lines we fit a least squares regression line through those points it looks as if as the empathic concern scale score increases, the activity in the pain-related brain centers tend to increase. So we might want to do a little inference on the slope to see if there is a real effect there, or if it was just very likely to see something like this due to chance alone. First, let's look at a confidence interval. Beta 1 hat is given right here as the estimate, so our beta 1 hat is 0 0.03454. The standard error is given right next to it there, the standard error. Standard error of what? Standard error of beta 1 hat is given right beside as 0 0.01225. And now I want a confidence interval for beta 1. And our formula for the confidence interval for beta 1 is a very familiar type of thing, hopefully. We start off with our best estimate of beta 1, our beta 1 hat, and we add and subtract a t value, the appropriate t alpha over 2 value, t sub alpha over 2, times the standard error of beta 1 hat. And we've got the standard error, and we've got beta 1 hat, we just don't have the t-value. But we could go to a table or a computer and get that. We need the degrees of freedom. And our degrees of freedom in simple linear regression are n minus 2. And we had 16 observations. And so we have a 14 degrees of freedom. And if you run off to your t-table and find the appropriate t-value, we will find that that is 2.145. And our beta 1 hat is 0 0.03454, and our standard error is 0 0.01225. If we run all of that through, we get our 95% confidence interval uh, to three decimal places at least, 0 0.008 to 0 0.061. We can be 95% confident that the true value of beta 1 lies within that interval. The real slope lies within that interval. Now one of the points of interest, one of the points to note, is that 0 is not within that interval. That entire interval lies to the right of 0, implying that we have some pretty solid evidence here that beta 1, the real slope, is in fact greater than 0, and there is an increasing trend. There is a real increasing trend. Now we can test that more formally though with a hypothesis test. Here we want to test the null hypothesis that beta 1 is equal to 0, and I'm asking you to do it at an alpha level of 0.05. And our test statistic here, our test statistic is simply our beta 1 hat minus 0 over the standard error of beta 1 hat. And when we fill in these values, we have 0 0.03454 minus 0. I'm going to put that in there because that's our hypothesized value divided by the standard error, which is given in our output. Those values were found here and here. This works out to 2.82. Lo and behold, that's right beside it as well. That is also given in the output. And when I want my p-value, I draw out my t-distribution. It's a little ugly there, but that's more or less the idea. And we have 2.82, our test statistic. And if we were having a two-sided alternative hypothesis, if I was having a two-sided alternative hypothesis, I don't have it written there, but if I was, then I want the area in the tail, the area to the left or right, whichever is smaller, and doubled, because it's a two-sided alternative. So I want this area, this area out in the tail, and I want to double that. 
but fortunately the computer knows that's what I want and it lists it here. So I have a p-value for the test. That's what this test, that's what this line is testing. The null hypothesis that beta 1 is equal to 0 and I get a p-value of 0 0.0136. That is in fact less than the given alpha level, which tells me that the evidence against the null hypothesis is, is significant at 0.05 and we have strong evidence that the real slope is actually different from 0. But what does that mean? Let's take a look at the plot again. In this plot, we see an increasing trend. There appears to be an increasing trend. We fit our least squares model through the line. We get a line with positive slope and an increasing trend. And what we've done is we've tested the null hypothesis that the real slope is zero, and we can reject that at 0.05. There appears to be a real increasing trend. What we are seeing here is unlikely to have occurred due to chance alone. And there is strong evidence that this increasing trend is a real effect and that the real slope is actually greater than zero. Now we could, if we so desire, carry out similar inference procedures on the intercept and they are carried out up here in this line. It is simply not nearly as interesting in the vast majority of spots and most of the time we are interested in this inference on the slope.